I think people place me in a box based on the color of my skin and because I am black I am automatically African American and they don't let me identify as biracial or as white which is kind of a problem. No one really ever asks me how I'm affected as a biracial person. Okay. I never get to speak on issues about being biracial. No one really seems to care what the biracial person thinks. It's frustrating for me to know that I will always be judged by the color of my skin and not with what's actually my like culture and heritage because I'm not just black and I'm not just white. Like There are so many things that make up who I am and my genes and no one will ever ask me that because of the color of my skin, we'll just assume. It was really frustrating to me because, because they didn't understand that I was biracial. And then, so they judged me like I was black. And then they realized that I was biracial and they were like, oh, okay. Like here's like, oh, okay, she's biracial. Her, she has a white family, she understands. But for the most part, they always pointed out that I was different from them. Um, which was strange for me because usually white people treated me like I was one of them. <laughs> so to have a group of white people who are like, oh, you're different. You don't come from a married, you don't have married parents. Your parents aren't together. Your dad and your mom are different colors. So you have two different cultures. What's that like? And I don't know. I just never experienced that before. I was always the odd man out, um, which was really hard. When I grew up, my grandma bought me a book and it was to help me figure out what, I'm gonna cry, it's so sad when I think about it. <laughs> um, because people would make fun of my siblings because they thought that we would lie when we said that we were related because we all have different dads. <sighs> So my grandma got me this book um, that had like a bunch of different people of different races and backgrounds in it. And um, it would say, instead of saying like, I'm black or I'm white or like I'm Mexican and stuff like that, it would say like, I'm, I am, I don't even know. It would say, it would have like, a person who looked like me and it would say, I'm caramel, like popcorn. And then it would show a person who looked like me and then it would show like caramel popcorn. And then it would say like, I am milk chocolate, like the candy bar, or I'm dark chocolate, or I'm almond. And I'm like just different ways of saying like, I don't know, I almost felt like like it was healthy to have the book, but I, then I felt like they didn't want me to think of myself as black. So I always told them that I was brown and that's like my grandparents taught me and my siblings to say, no, Eric is not black, she's brown. And which sounds really bad, but I feel like they had really good intentions behind it. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like a, a race thing. It was just, they were just trying to help me identify myself and my siblings. I don't know. I just felt like I was really scripted growing up. This is my childhood in a box that my mother gave me. You see my little baby clothes? My first outfit. <laughs> okay. If there's one thing that I want people to know about me, it's this. My name is Erica Brown. And yes, I am black and I'm white, but I am so much more than that. I am a wife and I am a future mother. <laughs> we got a baby cooking. And I'm a musician. I'm a friend. I am a child of God. I'm a future counselor. I am a hard worker. 
I'm vibrant, I'm positive, I'm strong, I'm loved, I'm compassionate. So if you're gonna see me, don't see me for just what I look like on the outside, but see me for all that I am.